1. This happened June 2017. I had just moved into a new apartment with my husband, we were newlyweds, and we came into our new place fresh. Before we were married, we shared a house with other people, so we didn't have our own kitchen items. The house was already stocked when we moved in, so we just used the plates, etc. that were already there. Meaning, since we were newlyweds, we bought a ton of new kitchen appliances. This is when Amazon comes in. We were ordering a lot of items from Amazon, and we were ordering it in intervals. Not only on purpose, but more just of, oh, we need this too, and that, and that. One of the items we ordered was a bullet blender. We wanted to meal prep, and the original magic bullet set only came with three cups, two large ones and one baby one that is useless for our purposes. So we ordered extra. In between ordering, we also had to return some items for a variety of reasons. It didn't fit our space, we didn't like the quality, changed our mind, etc. So here's where it gets weird. I received my order of my extra cups like normal, loved it, and immediately put them away, to make sure we had room and such. A couple of days later I received an email from Amazon saying that they got my return request, and that I will get my refund soon. It was for the cups I just put away, so I immediately looked in my cupboard to make sure I didn't accidentally send them back. Sure enough, there were four large, normal-sized cups, plus one small one in there. The three original plus two that I bought. We were still busy settling in, so we were behind on chores. Don't judge. And my Amazon box where the cups came in was still in our recycling. I always use the same box to send them back, so again, another hint that I did not send them back. I got my money back a few days later, checked again, and thought that it may have just been an Amazon system glitch, that I got extra cups for free. Woohoo! Fast forward a week or two later. I was meal prepping and I was setting up my workstation, and was looking for the large cups and only found two. I thought, hmm, maybe Hobby forgot to bring home some cups. Weird that it's two cups, but whatever. Remember the third one is a useless baby cup. I text my husband and I ask him if he has the cups. He says no, but that he'll double check his bag and car comes back and says no. I'm still skeptical because maybe I forgot them at the gym or work or something. My gym peeps know me and no one ever steals anything at my gym, let alone unbranded plastic cups. So I continue my meal prep and just think that I'll look for them the next day, it was a weekend, and just move on from the store. But then, as I'm finishing up, I notice that there are still five covers, I only have three vessels. I hardly bring my shakes to the gym or work without the cover since obviously it will explode in my car. I still decided to check the next day, but of course, they weren't there. Also weird that I forgot too if I did forget them. Not sure if Amazon has some weird big brother system that comes into my house and takes things that they say have been returned, or if there's another dimension wherein another me was unhappy with these cups and tried to return them but failed because my cups are now with her. I don't know but I can't find a real-world logical explanation to it. Just to get ahead of it, both my husband and I are perfectly healthy young adults, late 20s. No history of brain injuries or mental problems, no drug use, we don't drink heavily. Checked husband's car and bag as well. When I return Amazon items, I do it through our work mill room that is a huge hassle, so I try to avoid it, and I would have remembered being annoyed with having to do it. 2. Over the last week, I've been having bizarre things happen. I would like to share the few things that's been happening, some more interesting than others. For the first one, I was in my bedroom sorting laundry, and I was watching or listening to a YouTube video on my phone. I have YouTube Red, so my phone was locked while the video played. I thought I had heard a strange noise and thought maybe one of the dogs were getting into something. I had thought to myself, wow, I can't really hear over this video. I should pause it to listen. But my lazy ass decided not to, and continued sorting laundry. My boyfriend was on dog watch anyway, so it wasn't my problem. Ha. Then, for no reason whatsoever, the video just stopped playing on my phone, and my phone fell silent. I just stopped and chuckled to myself because I knew how weird that was. I took the opportunity to listen for the strange noise and heard nothing. Ended up checking to make sure the dogs definitely weren't getting into anything, because I thought that was a clear sign from the universe to go check. Everything seemed fine, so I went back to listening to my video and sorting my laundry. The next one is a quick story. 
I was sitting on my couch in the living room watching TV. I had seen the dog go into the kitchen, and seeing as he's a five-month-old puppy, I don't like when he's out of sight. I called him to come to me. Instead of running out of the kitchen like he should have, he came running out of the hallway, coming from the back bedroom. I know for a fact I had just seen him go into the kitchen. The last thing happened this morning, and I'm still pretty shaken up over it. Some background. On Sunday morning, I had woken up to find that neither my boyfriend nor I had remembered to lock the front door. So last night, I had double-checked that the door was locked before heading to bed. This morning, when I had woken up, I did my usual, which was roll out of bed, then plop myself onto the couch in the living room to browse social media, while I convinced myself to wake up. I lay there for probably 15 minutes, until I decide to start my day. I sit up to get off the couch and look up, and my front door is open about a foot. Surprisingly, my first instinct was to find the cat and make sure he didn't get out. I ran all over the place calling for her and then ran into the bedroom to wake up my boyfriend. At this point, my cat came out of her sleeping place to greet me, and I was relieved to see she was safe. In my panicked state of mind, I had told my boyfriend what happened, and he asked me if anything was missing. I'm not sure why that thought never occurred to me. He got up and checked all the rooms and closets to make sure no one had broken in, and we found nothing to be missing. I have no explanation as to why or how the front door was open. I do want to add that something else strange happened with our front door probably around two weeks ago. I was just finishing up cooking dinner, and my boyfriend was then going to run up to the party store to grab some pop. I was standing in the kitchen at the stove. Our front door is right outside the kitchen. Maybe 30 seconds after he had left and shut the door, I saw the door start to swing open. I thought he had forgotten something and was coming back inside. My one-year-old dog was sitting right outside the doorway acting a little excited. After a few moments go by and I don't see him come through the door, this raises some concerns. I work up the courage to go look behind the door or in the doorway. No one is there. Thank God I have a highly trained dog and she didn't run out to the door. I immediately call my boyfriend and tell him what had just happened. We both kinda agreed that he must not have latched the door all the way. After that happened with the door today though, I'm open to believing that something is just wrong with the front door. We tried playing with the door today to try to recreate it opening on its own, and couldn't get it to do it. I do however stand by what I said in knowing that the door was locked last night. Thank you for listening. I just wanted to share this with people who would like to hear. No one in my life really cares to hear about the weird things that keep happening. 3. This happened about two weeks ago. On December 31st, a friend and I decided to take a trip to our local beach to enjoy ringing in the new year. While waiting for my friend to pick me up, I was double-checking everything I was bringing, making sure I didn't forget anything. After making sure I had everything, I pulled out my pendant collection deciding which one I wanted to bring with me and where for the vacation. I found the one I wanted to bring with me. I laced it up on my chain and put it on. My friend finally arrived and we packed up his car. When we hopped in and started the car, he looked over and noticed my pendant and made a comment on how he liked it. First memory. My friend has skipped breakfast and it was about noon. With a three hour drive ahead of us, so shortly after taking off, we pulled into a McDonald's drive through I should make note here. I have a neck injury and due to this injury, I haven't been wearing any jewelry as the weight of the pendants are enough to cause strain and more pain to my neck. When going through the drive through though, I remember looking down at the pendant and wondering, is this a good idea to bring this? Not only because of my neck injury, but also because the link holding the necklace together came apart earlier in the week. Fast forward about an hour. We were on the road heading to the beach. I once again look down at my pendant and think to myself, I should probably take this off. The pendants I own have a decent weight to them, and when I drive I usually take them off to help my neck out, second memory. Fast forward to when we arrive. We get to our Airbnb at the beach and it's a beautiful day. We both want to go down to the beach so we unpack quickly and get dressed. Before I change, I take the pendant off and put it on the bed to avoid the chain being pulled on and possibly breaking. After changing, I put the chain back on and we go down. We go down to the beach and we hang out until the sunset. During this period, I was running around and playing with my friend's dogs. Walking up and down the coastline, basic beach stuff. 
After the sun sets, we go to get dinner. Once we got to the restaurant and placed our food order, I went to the restroom. At this point, I had my jacket unzipped as it was warm and toasty in the restaurant. When I went to wash my hands after using the restroom, I look in the mirror and realize my pendant and chain are no longer around my neck. At this point, I don't freak out. I accept what's happened. It's dark out. High tide is coming up. I realize there's no way I'm finding this pendant. I'm not very materialistic and don't get attached to objects, just people. <laughs> and just hope some lucky person has found it and treasures it. But for some odd reason, I had a weird and funny feeling I would find it. The next day, I traced my steps just in case the pendant fell off before I made it to the beach. The Airbnb was a few blocks away. Of course, I do not find it, and this solidified the loss, and from here I moved on. The whole trip, three days, my friend keeps bringing the pendant up to me and can't understand how I'm not freaking out, and I'm not sad. I just explain to him how I don't get attached to objects and just hope someone has found it, and it's bringing them joy. Fast forward to the drive home, I still have this funny feeling that somehow, one day, the pendant will come back into my hands. We make it back to my house and the first thing I do is let my dog out. Don't worry, I had a sitter, but she left two hours before I got home. As I'm outside with my dog, I have a feeling come over my body. I still struggle trying to explain this feeling and don't think I'll ever truly be able to explain it. It's like someone hit the reset button on the world, or like the world skipped a beat. Like someone hit the pause button on the universe and then it was resumed. The moment after this occurred, something rushed into my head saying, the pendant is on my desk. Immediately, I hurry to my room, and right on my desk lies the pendant and chain. At first, I start laughing. So confused, but in so much joy that it's there. But within seconds, the laughter is consumed by confusion. How is this possible? I'm baffled, and I'm running through my memories of how this is possible. Nothing is making sense. I'm going over the three memories I listed above. It was 100% with me on this trip, and I 100% left the beach without it. I spoke to my friend shortly after finding it, and he just laughed and made fun of me. I asked him if he remembered complimenting my pendant when we left for the beach, and he doesn't remember. It was a small two-second interaction, so I'm not surprised he doesn't remember. But it just makes this even weirder. I'll never understand what happened. I'm a very logical person. I don't believe in anything in life without evidence and science, with few exceptions based on personal experiences. I can't comprehend how this is possible. The only thing that makes sense is that my brain made up multiple memories. But this never happens with me, especially when it's only been a couple of days. I understand memories from years ago being distorted. But when they are recent... My memory is never distorted. 4. So about 3 or 4 years ago, when I was still in college, I went over to my friend's apartment because we had a group homework thing to do. It got pretty late. We got there at maybe 7 or 8 p.m., and it was probably about midnight or 1 a.m. at the time. All of us were smokers, cigarettes, terrible habit. Back then. So we went down to the common area of the building, which had a pool and some seats to hang out. But more importantly, it was on an outside area, no roof over our heads. To take a smoke break from all the homework, which was mostly or all done by that point and just hang out. This pool area was completely deserted at that time except for us. But it was near the main entrance of the building. And the only other person nearby besides us, we were a group of five people, was the doorkeeper of the building. In any case, now that I've set the scene, this is what happened. It was about 2.30 or 3 a.m., and the sky all of a sudden got clear. And I mean not as clear as daytime, clear kind of like dawn. Which is really weird because in my city sunrise, not that we saw sun, happens at about 5.50 or 6 a.m. So it was definitely still early for that. We all got freaked out, even the doorkeeper left his station and came near us and said, It's really early to be this bright, right? Which we all agreed. It was far too early in the AM for it to be this clear, and I mean, it wasn't like it all of a sudden became daytime, but definitely clearer. We could see shapes of buildings and a billboard that just seconds ago was too dark to see. We all got freaked out, but not scared, so we just kind of talked about it amongst ourselves, 
None of us had seen anything like that before. It was no later than 3.30 a.m. when this happened. We stayed there until like 4 a.m. just talking and hanging. Then I drove home. All this time it never got dark again. But I was in bed before it was normal for the sun to rise in my city. and never gave it another thought until I found this sub. I had never experienced something like that in my life before, and never have since. Went back to my friend's apartment and hung out at that exact same area at about those hours in the AM a bunch of times after that over the next two or three years of college. None of us experienced anything like that day again. It is completely out of the ordinary or normal for it to be as clear as it was at that hour in my city. I've never seen that happen again. It was like 3 a.m. and it was pitch black a second ago, and then it got clear like you would expect 5 or 6 p.m. to be, just when the sun is setting and it is just starting to get dark. 5. This happened to me just last night. I'm currently dog-sitting for my best friend and staying at her house while doing so. Some context. I watch this dog every weekend for half of the year, and I'm over at her house all the time when my friend is home. This dog is a bitch, pun intended, to everyone she hasn't known for years. She'll literally bite people she doesn't know very well, even if they'd met dozens of times. Even with her owner and myself, she's often very standoffish and will bite us if she's in a mood. She's also not big into cuddling, especially at night and in bed. This dog is like a cat. You have to do things on her terms or risk getting snapped at. With that said, she would not leave me alone last night. Around 3am I woke up to her insistently licking my face and trying to be close to me. I'd shove her away and she'd just crawl back up to me and wake me up again. When I buried my face to keep from getting licked, she just dug into the covers to get closer to me. She'd eventually leave me alone for a short while after practically clawing on my head to sit as high on the pillow as possible and pulling my hair by doing so. After several bouts of being uncharacteristically woken up like this, I thought that maybe she just needed to use the bathroom really badly. I reluctantly took her out and went back to bed. Not long after, she woke me up doing it again. But this time whining when I shut her out by hiding under the blankets. Thinking that maybe the heater that was on was scaring her, I turned it off. With the heater no longer making noise, that's when I first heard it. It was a click-click sound of the dog walking around on the hardwood floors. It's a distinct sound, one that I'm very familiar with. Thing is, the dog was in the bed. Thinking I was just hearing things with the sound, adjusting in the room. I ignored it, and laid down to fall back to sleep. Once again, the dog kept licking me, whining and crawling all over my head. I was absolutely baffled at this point. I had been regularly dog-sitting her for over two years now, and I had never seen her act like this. Normally, if an animal or person comes nearby, she'll go into protective growl mode. This was something else entirely. I sat up, looked at her, trying to figure out what was wrong, and that's when I heard it a second time. Distinctly. Not only did I hear it, the dog heard it too. She clearly responded to the sound, whined, then nuzzled closer to me. I looked around the bed, but nothing was there. Realizing that it was probably just another glitch and not an animal that had somehow gotten in, I decided to just go back to bed. This dog, that usually never lets anyone cuddle her for longer than five minutes, finally let me sleep because I pulled her into a hug and stayed like that. I was absolutely amazed to wake up hours later to her still under my arm. Maybe we were both hearing a parallel version of her walking around and that spooked her out. Normally she goes into instant bark or growl mode, often frantically running up to the windows, growling when she hears a raccoon or other animal outside. Whatever the case, I think what we heard in the room wasn't normal. Her reaction is testament enough to me. Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to 5 True Glitch in the Matrix Stories, episode 93. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. Okay, just a heads up, I will try to do a glitch video for next week. I have some, I don't know if I'll be able to get them all, but I'm working this week so I can take next week off. I just want to have a little bit of a rest. Uh, I was going to do it at Christmas week, but I wasn't quite able to manage it then. So I'm going to try for next week. Uh, I'll, that means I'll be spending the next few days, um, this is Wednesday currently, I did a bit on Tuesday, 
So right through to about Sunday, I'll be making this week's and next week's videos. I should get uh, the rest of this week's finished tomorrow, and then I can start on next week's. Uh, so that does mean that some series, if I can't get the 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 stories I need in advance, then I'll I'll do something else, just so we will have a video up on that day. Uh, so far we're looking good for spinning plates and everything like that, they should be alright, I think we're okay for true, true scary stories. Uh, so at the moment, the only one that's uncertain is Glitch, uh, and it doesn't mean there won't be, but we'll see what, I, see, we'll see what happens. Okay, and with that I'm going to head off for now, so until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourself.